Hey guys, Chris, Ironhead Garage. Well, I'm out here messing around in the shop with the old 55. I've been, uh, got that rear end housing all cleaned up, ready for the gasket. Got the gasket there. I'm gonna put a thin little bead of, uh, ultra black gasket maker, oil resist it. Around there real thin, and then I'll put the gasket on, then I'll put another little thin coat around there, just spread it around with my finger. That'll stop it from ever leaking. This posi section over here, I blew it all out, cleaned it up real good. And um, I got this little, little uh, vial here, or whatever you call it, a little squirter. I've been putting a little bit of gear oil in there. Because I blew it all out and it was pretty dry. The bearings are all nice. So I squirted a bunch in there. Squirted a bunch around in the ring gear. And the, the pinion gear. And, and down in those clutches. And then this bearing. And I s sat here and spun it around for a while. It's nice and quiet. I wanted to get a little bit of lube in there. So if I get it in that uh, housing. I get my axles in there. So I can spin it around a little bit so it's not dry. So I'm going to put that center section in here. And then I'm going to put my tape measure in there and measure. And see what I come up with. With that posi bottom it out. And then that posi center section. And then measure my axles. They're cut a quarter inch. We'll see if I had to cut them or not. Alright guys. We'll get on that. We'll get that center section in there. Hey guys. Yeah, I got that front end tilted forward. Getting up underneath the car, working a little bit. Hey, check it out. I got that posi section in that housing. Got it all painted up. Got the new gasket in there. Got the nuts all tight. Some guys might say, how tight? Good and tight. So, got them good and tight. Did the cross. Tightening them up. So, they're nice and good now. The cross pattern. So I was wondering if I needed to cut these uh, these axles or not. So I, uh, I stuck my tape measure in there. Yeah, don't do that. This end there got caught in that bearing cage in there and I barely could get it out. I had to get a little quarter inch rod and bounce it around there lightly until that tape measure popped out of there. Thought I was going to have to pull my whole uh, center section out of there and ruin the gasket. So I came over here and I got this... Uh, this concrete stake that I got, it was nice and clean, it's got a nice little round point on it, so I stuck that in there until it bottomed out into the posi, and I made a mark on it right here at the end of the housing, and measured it, and it was 27 and 3 eighths, so I cut a quarter inch off my axles, so I hooked the tape measure on this bearing retainer, Put it tight against that bearing and hooked it there like like it would tighten up onto the housing and measure to my to my cut and I had 27 and an eighth so it's a quarter shorter so if it was a quarter inch longer it would be dead bottoming out inside that posi so thank you Don for giving me that info I appreciate it and Brent same to you buddy so on the passenger side I did the same deal with that, that, that big stake, put it in there, and I had 28 and 7 eighths. I measured my axle, passenger side axle from the bearing retainer to the end, and I had 28 and 5 eighths. So that's a quarter inch shorter. So it's like perfect, a quarter inch from bottoming out in those axles, maybe 3 sixteenths each way, because it's kind of hard to put on that round. But, yeah, they would have bottomed down in there. So that was good to know. So I got the rear end all together now. She spins nice and easy. Painted up to match. So that's killer. So I've been, uh, <clears throat> oh, here's this uh, rust converter I bought. My buddy over there, Joey, at uh, Underground Creation. His name is Joey. He's building a gasser. He uses this stuff. Coral Seal. Yeah, it's got some bad reviews, it's got some good reviews, but 
I think some of the bad reviews are uh, guys using it on like their Toyotas, you know, rusty ass floorboards or and then driving them down in the salty snow and sure anything's going to re-rust right back up, but if you use it right, it's non-toxic. This goes a long ways. I think it's like 500 square feet or something. I'll have to read it again. But it's 50 bucks for that jug. You know, when I was young, doing like my hot rod truck, working in the body shop, they really never had rust converter stuff. To convert rust, you stripped it down the bare metal and got all that rust off. That was the old way of doing it. But today, they got all that stuff out. Well, I'm sure some are better than others, but uh, check it out underneath here. Yeah, she's all black. There are a couple little spots I couldn't get to, but pretty damn good all the way down to the front frame rails, the whole trunk pan. I even did it up in the wheel areas. I didn't do all the way down there. You can see I left about four inches. That's where I'm going to cut that radius. But yeah, it kind of turns uh, purple, purplish blue weird color fluorescent color when it's drying and then when it dries it turns black and it's it's supposed to be ready for it's like the primer it's the primer or you can put primer on it and then some paint so we're let all this cure it's supposed to be 24 hours to cure you can see it's still wet in a bunch of spots it took me a couple hours to do it after i went around with a scotch bright pad and the and a little wire brush and cleaning the little spots that the wire wheel didn't get. But you can see all up under there, you see it's a little light purple still. It's all black now, so that's killer. Man, this car was nasty underneath. Come around this side. You know, some guys uh, strip your car down, they think they get all the rust off, sandblast it, but you can never get all that rust off up underneath them, all them braces and stuff unless you go buy a brand new body. All brand new panels maybe. Best way is to take your car and have it acid dip like they used to do back in the day. Not even sure you can have that done anymore. We yep, have all up in the fender rolls there. So, there's that uh, spare tire tub. All down this way. Yeah, it's just a dirty bushing there. Not bad though, it's way better. Compared to what this old girl did look like. Man. Yeah, so hopefully it works pretty good. I'm 45 years old and who knows how long I'll live. It'll be good for my lifetime. Maybe the the boy or somebody can repair it again someday just like when I got it. Nothing lasts forever. Yeah, some of them cars in those heated museums last forever though, I guess. Yeah, I did this, um, the spare tire tub in here. You can see, look at it, it's like glowing purple, this flashlight. But yeah, it's still drying supposed to turn clear when it's on the paint and then it'll turn black when it's on the rust the rust makes it turn black so we'll let this stuff cure up and uh, probably get some uh, black satin paint and get up underneath here and paint all this yeah with a respirator on it was it's actually uh, supposed to be 45 degrees to 100 degrees, dropping from 100 to use this core seal. It was 48 degrees a day, so I lucked out being able to use it. I'm gonna kick that heater on there when it just kicked on. So I set that there and let it dry up underneath there. Let that heat blow up underneath that car and uh, let her cure. It's kind of nice that it's non toxic. Fumes won't kill you. Well, that's what the jug says anyway. It's a little stinky, but not bad. And I like some of that stuff. Alright guys, we'll let her cure her up. See what she looks like then.
Yeah, the silver bullet. Well, guys, I got anxious and uh, I got this bottom of this car all painted up. Man, I ain't been out here for a couple of days. It's been fumigating me out here every time I came out, but man, check it out. It's all black underneath there. Look at that. Man, it's almost like a brand new car underneath. Looking pretty good, all painted up. I didn't uh, do my banner fenders here. I'll do them after I cut them, but uh, I'll have to do these uh, where the jack stands are setting. I'll have to paint under there, put a little rust converter off and clean a couple little spots, but man, all the way, the inner rocker panels, got it all painted up all on the other side. You guys can see down that way, all black and painted coated the whole thing man I wore a respirator under here I can only take a so long sprain on my back on this creeper but yeah it looks pretty good underneath here a couple places I'll have to touch up but man it's pretty nice you guys probably never thought I was gonna get all that rust off of here and get her all looking like this but man it was a lot of work my boy helping me looking pretty good now so now I can get that uh, that rear end in and get them shocks in get them axles in and uh, oh look at that I had some bags on my headers keeping them nice and white take them babies off now I can put one on this side get my exhaust back on Underneath the blankets, had them covered up from any overspray. Uh, there's, I just use garbage sacks. Those work pretty good. Keep the headers nice and white. Oh yeah. Well, she's coming along. Little by little, I'm getting it. We'll shut this hood. go guys there's a 55 Nova so I wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving I'll get this video out it's Tuesday now I missed a video this weekend I tried coming on over here and uh, it was just too stinky I've had this uh, little heater burning carrying that paint it was just too toxic coming on over here to try to make a video but it's been a couple days and uh it's much better now and check it out snow outside too yeah winter's here so we'll uh get back on this during the holiday vacation get that rear end in there maybe get them shocks on there and the axles in i start putting them uh them new brake drums on there and all them brakes. So I appreciate all you guys watching. Thanks for all the support. Appreciate all you guys. Take care. Till next time.